I'm going to call the uh, uh, February 12th, 2015 meeting of the Marin Local Agency Formation Commission to order. And Candace, if you would proceed with the roll call, please. Jeff Blanchfield. Here. Carla Condon. Here. Damon Conley. Here. Craig K. Murray. Here. Gary Phillips. Here. Dennis Radoni. Here. Audi uh, alternate seated in the audience, Christopher Burdick. Here. Jack Baker. Here. Roll has been taken. Great. We uh, have a quorum and thus can conduct business. Um, I'm going to take it uh, as the consensus of the commission that they approve of the agenda unless I hear differently. If so, we will proceed ahead to the com uh, public comment period. It's the time we set aside on our agenda for the members of the public to address the commission on matters that we have not scheduled for discussion this evening. And if you would like to address us, please step forward to the lectern and speak directly into the microphone as instructed, uh, and we will hear from you. Well, seeing no uh, members of the public like to speak at this time, I'm going to move to the consent calendar where we have one, two, three, four, five, six items, uh, beginning with the financial report and projections for FY 1415, uh, approval of our minutes from our last meeting uh, in January, uh, both the uh, January 8th and the uh, January 21st uh, minutes. And nominations, uh, if commissioners have any, for the Special District's Risk Management Authority board member. Progress report on our current work program, uh, information on new legislation for 2015 with some notes on directly on Marin Lafco's part in those uh, legislative matters. And current and pending proposals that are provided to us uh, as required by the uh, Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act for information only. I'll move consent. Second. A motion and second to approve the consent calendar. All those commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 With an abstention of the January 21st, 2005 minutes. Okay. I'm sure Kansas has got that. Uh, all those commissioners in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstaining? Motion passes with Dennis's abstention for the uh, minutes on the 21st. Well, I will move then to our public hearing member uh, items. This is a continuation uh, from our last the regularly scheduled meeting uh, for a proposal for annexation of a parcel in on Lucas Valley Road to the Marin Municipal Water District and a sphere of influence amendment for annexation of that property into the Las Galinas. Valley Sanitary District. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. So as mentioned, uh, this public hearing is for the commission to consider a landowner applicant's request, and this is without any LAFCO tinkering, okay, uh, that comes before you this evening to ultimately re uh, desire uh, a couple of concurrent changes that uh, would add um, an unincorporated 61 acre lot at 1501 Lucas Valley Road and add it to both uh, Marin Municipal Water District as well as the Las Galinas Valley Sanitary District. And as you can see on the map that we have up on the wall, uh, the affected territory itself is directly across the street from what's referred to as the Upper uh, Lucas Valley Community and uh, is designated, uh, although it doesn't meet LAFCA's zone def definition, uh, is designated for an agricultural use uh, by the County of Marin by way of an A1 designation. And importantly, that A1 designation means uh, there's a 60 acre minimum lot requirement. So no further uh, subdivision uh, can occur here. Uh, now the purpose of the proposal itself as it has been submitted to you this evening for approval is to ultimately establish uh, public water and sewer service 
to an existing single family residence uh, giving, given uh, performance concerns with both the septic system and an on-site well. It's the septic system that is of particular interest uh, to us because uh, we've got an, uh, an attestment from an outside engineering firm as part of the application uh, documentation uh, that the septic is probably the original. It's well beyond its useful life, life and one way or the other needs to be replaced. Uh, and there's two options. There's a private remedy or, and as the applicant is requesting, uh, a public option, which is to annex into Las Galenas. Uh, now, that's the proposal that has been submitted for the Commission's consideration. Your staff is asking that you do something rather unique up front, and that is to exercise your discretion and bifurcate this proposal on the dais and only consider this evening the actions uh, specific to Las Galenas Valley Sanitary District. And you would defer, okay, consideration of the remaining actions tied to Marin Municipal for reasons that we detail in our agenda report and specifically in deference to a request made by Marin Municipal. Okay, so with this upfront amendment in play, what the agenda report <coughs> goes about before you is addressing the key policy issues that um, the state has you consider any time you consider a boundary change specific to Las Galenas. And there's two particular policy issues that I just want to highlight for the Commission that ultimately you would need to take action on uh, this evening. Uh, first, the Commission would need to determine that yes, an amendment to Las Galenas' uh, sphere of influence is appropriate to add uh, this affected territory, and in doing so, uh, make a related determination that yes, this Commission believes that public sewer is appropriate uh, for this area. And then second, concurrently, uh, you would need to determine that the timing of the annexation itself is appropriate, again, relative to your policies and all the factors outlined by the legislature, and that really makes up the bulk of the staff report uh, before you. Uh, now staff, though circumspectively and in deference to ultimately wanting to eliminate a failing septic system in an urbanizing area uh, is recommending yes on both counts. Yes, a sphere of influence amendment makes sense, and yes, an annexation makes sense, albeit, uh, albeit with some special amendments in terms that we believe ultimately will provide some added uh, service and growth certainty to the Commission going forward. And let me just take a couple of seconds on those special amendments in terms. Uh, with respect to the physical boundary of the annexation, as mentioned, the applicants have come to you tonight only looking to annex uh, the physical lot that on our map is highlighted in orange, 1501 Lucas Valley. We're asking that you amend this annexation boundary in two areas. One is that you take in all of the associated right of way on Lucas Valley uh, for purposes of providing a cleaner boundary line for the district as well as to facilitate encroachment permits. Uh, for the district going further. And then secondly, let me flip to this next map. We're recommending that you only take in a little less than half of the actual parcel itself, which is highlighted on our uh, map here in kind of a light blue. The right of way is in yellow, and the uh, affected portion of the lot that we're recommending for annexation is in blue. This portion of the lot, which is about 26 acres in size, Incorpor uh, incorporates both the existing residents as well as other improvements and the likely, you know, as I'm looking at this map too, I apologize, we, <laughs> the map on this screen is different from the map in your, uh, your packet, so there's going to be a bit of a discrepancy and I, I apologize for that. So let me not confuse you. Um, Ultimately, if you refer to the um, Exhibit A to um, the second resolution in your draft packet, you will see an outline of all of the right-of-way plus, and I'll do this using the red marker, essentially taking in the 26 acres that starts at this property line and connects to the uh, terminus point for this parcel right here. And the reason being here is this is where the existing residence is, this is where the driveway is, 
And if there's any second uh, unit that the County of Marin would ever approve down the line, it would likely be in this low line topography area. The rest of this area, everything to the, um, I guess that would be to the northwest, uh, would be excluded from the annexation. That's about 34 acres. That's the proposed amended boundary that your staff is recommending as provided in the agenda report. We're also recommending a condition, and the condition is that you require the applicant to sign a recorded agreement with Las Colinas Valley Sanitary District agreeing that public sewer service would only go to the existing residents at 1501 Lucas Valley in any authorized second unit that the County of Marin may approve down the line. Meaning, if the County of Marin down the line, five years or 20 years from now, decides to rezone this property and to allow for further uh, lot lo or uh, subdivision, it would still need to come back to the commission to make sure that the connection of public sewer is readily available for whatever uh, development intensity may be planned. So it's a, it's, a, it's a control both on service adequacy as well as growth. So that is the recommended action for the commission to consider. We've captured it all as part of alternative action one. Uh, that includes a sphere of influence amendment and an annexation, but the annexation again would only be of the right of way on Lucas Valley and then the 26 acres that comprise the low lying lands of the lot. Uh, the rest of the uh, property would be outside uh, the jurisdictional boundary of uh, Las Colinas. Now, in considering this recommendation, there are two other issues that I just briefly want to uh, touch on because uh, they came up in our review. Uh, the first is anytime you make a sphere of influence change commission, uh, the law suggests that your municipal service review needs to be at least five years or younger. Well, in this particular case, the municipal service review on record is about 10 years old. Um, however, based on the supplemental information we provided you in our report, I think you can go forward uh, today uh, using that 2004 municipal service review <coughs> without requiring a new study. So that's the first thing to note. And then the second, and I know that uh, a neighbor, uh, Mr. Marinoff, brought this to our attention. Eventually, it does make sense for this commission to come back as part of our study of Lucas Valley and look at fire protection service. Right now, this lot is in county service area number 31. It probably makes more sense that this lot ultimately go into either Marinwood or CSA 13. We just don't know which one right now. And rather than go through that analysis, we're suggesting let's just punt that for another day, but we wanted to bring that up to the commission's attention. So um, I'll stop here. This is a public hearing as required under law because you're looking at a sphere change. I know we have the applicants, uh, representatives in attendance, as well as at least one person who'd like to speak on this. Thank you, Chair. Okay, I, I'm gonna ask if any commissioners have any questions of the executive officer on his report and presentations before we open it to the public and then we ask questions based on that. Commissioner Arnold. And so if you're just using what happened in, oh, sorry. If you are using the acreage, I don't remember how much it is, but with the house on it and, and the rest of it is out of the sphere of influence, is that correct? And, and, and why, what does that mean exactly? So again, uh, and I'm, I'm referring to Exhibit A now in our agenda report for resolution, the second resolution. What we're asking that you include in the annexation is the existing home, as well as the other improvements that are already on the ground, the driveway, and then the likely area for a second unit. What we're asking to, for you to exclude is the 34 acres that um, are all graded, or, or not graded, excuse me, uh, topography challenge and unlikely to be developed at least any time in the near future, even with a rezoning. Okay. And the idea here is to reflect what is likely to be intense, not intense use, but uses on the property at least in the near term. If they want to come back, let's say 50 years from now, the county of Marin decides to rezone this area and allow for grading on that uh, back portion of the lot, 
uh, they would have to come and actually get an annexed, uh, uh, annexation approval from this commission. But the zoning stays at, at A1. Yeah. And, we, and, of course, LAFCO has nothing to do with the zoning. Right. Yeah. Right. I guess I had a question, if I can, just to follow up Commissioner Arnold's, and that is the objective uh, seems to me to make it such that the applicant would have to come back to the commission if the county were to change the zoning that allowed different uses, Correct. different intensity. Correct. But wouldn't that be the case under the existing 60-acre parcel? That is, there isn't anything else allowed, so if there is a change in use, they well, would have to come back. They would have to come if, to LAFCO to get No, the, if okay. you were to annex the entire lot now, um, then if the county in 10 years decides to change this to... Uh, 20 uh, acre ranch yeah, or something like they that. They could go about doing that, uh, and they would, the landowner would just simply go to Las Colinas and ask for an extended connection. Okay. There would be no connectivity for them to come back to LAFCO. Mm -hmm. Once you annex, it's out of your control. Good. So this, this vest in LAFCO, additional control over time on that area. Yes, well said. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I understand. I thought that was important to understand yes. before the question. Commissioner Condon. There. Um, I just want to make sure I'm clear on something. Um, we're deferring the MMWD section completely? Correct. Okay, so To a date uncertain. Okay, and just request. we're including the Los Galinas Sanitary District in that portion that Correct. you identified. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Redoni. I'm um, keen. I was wondering if uh, Las Galinas had any comment about the amendments. Are they aware of your proposed amendment? Uh, they're, they're aware of it, and uh, in, uh, not looking directly at uh, Commissioner Murray, uh, they took action, I believe, uh, last week or two weeks ago to vet this one more time, and they um, submitted no objection. Okay. And then, uh, secondly, whether any uh, additional correspondence or comments from Marin Municipal sent. I know this. we've had this a couple months. I, I had an email communication about two weeks ago, and the response was nothing's changed on their end. Thank you. Commissioner Murray. Uh, Kane, thank you for the report. Um, one question here is um, about the entire parcel yeah. and service to that parcel. So <clears throat> Las Galinas provides recycled water as well. So if there's future service provisions such as recycled water in this agricultural area that the owner may want, mm -hmm. then are you saying that this would be a time where you'd have to come back to LAFCO to annex for that service? Well, interestingly enough, uh, there is an exemption under LAFCO law that says recycled water provision is outside the commission's purview. So they could come today or they could talk to the landowner today and establish uh, a purple pipe there without ever having to go to uh, LAFCO. Okay, any other question, commissioner questions before I open the public hearing? Okay, uh, I'm going to open the public hearing, and we do have a card from Ron, Mr. Ron Marinoff. Uh, and Mr. Marinoff, if you would come and then speak directly into the microphone. Yes, thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Ron Marinoff, uh, chairman of the Advisory Council for County Service Area 13 which uh, all of you may not know where it is. It's immediately to the north of this property. On the north side of Lucas Valley Road, it's the 538 single-family detached homes from Mount Lassen, which is basically the entrance to Juvenile Hall west to Lucas Valley Estates. And also the six or eight homes on Maoli Drive which is uh, on this map is to the left of the property. So basically, CSA 13 surrounds this property on two sides, directly across the road and to the west. The way the property uh, is set up now with county service area number 31, fire protection and paramedic service technically comes from Woodacre, which uh, doesn't work. So as a result of uh, 
having to wait forever for either one, basically the dispatcher, uh, after they do some research, dispatches Marinwood Fire Department, which is the closest department, and it dispatches the San Rafael Paramedics, which is the closest paramedic service. What we're saying is we would like this annexed to CSA 13 since the Marinwood Fire Department is going to be providing the service. Uh, we should get paid for it. Uh, it's a very simple uh, proposition. CSA 13 contracts with Marinwood CSD for fire protection and it contracts with the city of San Rafael for paramedic service. So this would uh, be a very minor uh, change, but it would make for a more efficient use of these two services, plus the districts that provide the service, Marinwood for fire and San Rafael for the paramedics, would get the revenue uh, for this service. It's not a lot of money, but it's, it's a principle that's involved, that those who provide the services should be paid for it. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, I'd be happy to uh, answer them for you. Any commissioner have any questions of Mr. Marinoff? Mr. Marinoff, thank you very much. Okay, I would uh, request that you add the sphere of influence, this property, to the sphere of influence of CSA 13, and at the appropriate time in the future, which may be when the Marinwood uh, Municipal Water District wakes up that all the lakes are overflowing, might decide to give a hookup to these people, there would be a dual annexation to CSA 13 and to the Water District. <clears throat> Thank you Thank very you. much. And uh, Keen, I understand that you believe we're gonna be looking at this issue as part of our scheduled, okay, future work. Okay, thank you. So your, your, your comments are, are well taken and uh, they line up with what I believe our future work in this area will be. Thank you very much. Any other members of the public would wish to speak on this matter? If not, I'm going to entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. A motion and second to close the hearing. Uh, all those commissioners in favor of closing the hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstain? The hearing is closed. Um, additional comments or questions, commissioners, to, to uh, the executive officer or to Mr. Ranoff? Yes. Commissioner Penner. Thanks. I, I think it's uh, perhaps self-evident, but I just want to make it <coughs> certain because what uh, Mr. Marinoff has, uh, has suggested makes uh, eminent sense to me. So there's nothing we're doing this evening would preclude us at a later date uh, with the action we have presumably will be taking. It won't preclude any aspect of what uh, Ron has suggested. Correct. Thank you. Okay, any other commissioner comments? We do have a staff recommendation before us, which is to adopt two resolutions. Resolutions 1501, which is attached to the staff report, which would essentially annex the sewer district's sphere of influence, annex the, uh, annex that property into the sphere of influence, and Resolution 1502, which would then annex the property into the uh, Las Galinas Sanitary District's Jeff, territory. Jeff, I have a quick follow-up question. So, sure. Keen, your point on uh, issues of future proposed in intensification, should they arise, does that appear in the that limitation appear in the resolutions or uh, yes. Yeah. excuse me yes in in two ways the res the second resolution dealing with the annexation itself the first part is it it essentially cuts the lot in half in terms of what is actually being annexed I got that. and then the second part is it includes a condition that says applicant you sign a recorded agreement with Las Galinas 
that runs with the property saying the sewer is only for the existing resident and residents in any authorized second unit um, and before uh, we need that before we record the annexation so you have two protections okay great Keen, I have a question how was the the boundary line separating the annexed portion of the parcel and the unannexed portion of the parcel determined that is an outstanding question and, and your staff spent some time with the applicants on this very matter because we wanted to provide clear direction to ultimately a surveyor to do this and so again and I, again I apologize that it's not uh, uh, on uh, the screen but if you look at exhibit a the lines and in the in, in the report and in the resolution it is specific to this it is to follow the parcel lines the existing parcel lines it's it's not well um, seen in this copy but essentially we are going to literally uh, draw a straight line from one parcel line uh, to uh, uh, the next um, and again this is going to get vetted out by county surveyor's office uh, for my <laughs> oversight and nothing gets recorded with uh, the state until I see a map that meets this expectation of the Commission okay would, would, would this be recorded by the county the county recorders office or it does ultimately get recorded um, with the recorders office but more importantly for purposes of LAFCO with the State Board of Equalization uh -huh. that's where the actual tax assessment role okay. gets switched over yeah. okay um, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Do you have a question? Okay. Dennis? Um, Keen, I have a technical question. On page 2 of your 1502 resolution, you refer to any authorized second unit. Yes. And my concern there is, I believe, in the County of Marin, you can have a second unit which has a kitchen and a guest cottage without a kitchen. Um, and still meet the current uh, planning codes and so I didn't want to restrict them from something that they actually have the right to and because earlier on you referred to second unit you had an S on the end of it and 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 yeah. I wanted to just be clear that I don't think we should be restricting their rights that they currently have and and from my experience in the un, un urban uh, rural area I know that you can have a a, a guest cottage without a kitchen yes. and an additional second unit so yes and this uh, may be just an added wording there that could clarify that thank you it's in the public record we'll vet that we'll uh, correct that okay so you're adding an S or taking an S off I, I, I'm right. adding an S. <laughs> we're going to uh, we're going to simplify it by uh, just referencing any authorized use as currently allowed by County uh, of Marin yeah. and we'll stay out of the prescription Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Condon, you had a question. I was, I was just going to move to adopt the resolution if there were no further comments. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll uh, oh. move to adopt resolution 1501, making determinations and approving a sphere of influence amendment to the Las Colinas Valley Sanitary District. Second. I have a motion and second to approve resolution 1501. All commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioners abstain? The resolution is approved. Okay, and then I'll continue to um, move to adopt resolution 1502 um, as amended, making determinations and approving annexation to the Las Galinas Valley sanitary district second we have a motion and a second to approve resolution 15-02 uh, all commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye aye any commissioner opposed any commissioner abstaining the motion passes and uh, the annexations take place uh, thank you, Chair. And we don't need a motion on this third part, but just uh, a, a, a nod of the head that in our recommendation, we also talked about directing staff to come back as part of the Lucas Valley update to address the fire issue. So yes. uh, we'll do that. Thank you. Yes, and, and that's what Mr. Marinoff was pointing out needs to be thank taken you. up. Great. Thank you. Are we done? And then at some time, uh, 
there may be an application to amend into the water districts. As soon as I, 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 uh, the, the drought is officially over, I think the applicants ah. will re-engage uh, Marin Municipal on that topic. Okay. All right, I'll move to the next item, item number eight, which is the proposed update to our annual strategic plan. Uh, thank you, Chair. So, uh, as mentioned, the second public hearing is for uh, the Commission to consider a proposed update to Marin Lafco's adopted strategic plan. Uh, the proposed update that we have brought to you has been pre prepared by staff and largely based on the feedback that the Commission generated uh, at its workshop on January uh, 21st and to a lesser extent, okay, uh, staff's own uh, observations. And as hopefully we've detailed in the report itself, this very much should be considered a stay the course uh, document given the commission expressed general uh, content for the direction of Marin Lafco and in particular kind of our continued uh, but measured uh, proaction with respect to fulfilling your regulatory and planning responsibilities. All of which means uh, the proposal that you have before you carries forward all six existing big picture agency goals that this commission I think established a few years uh, back. It also carries forward most of the implementing strategies that are in the 2014 strategic plan, albeit with some revisions uh, here and there. Uh, now, uh, keeping with the proactive mantra, we did add uh, four new implementing strategies or policy objectives, if you will, that I wanted to quickly uh, highlight for the Commission, all addressing issues that, again, to some degree we talked about at the January 21st workshop and deal with, I think, public policy issues that um, certainly are increasingly relevant to this Commission and perhaps, if you agree, it's time that we uh, put some formalization of our, of our interest uh, there, too. Uh, this includes uh, getting a seat or taking a seat uh, on existing uh, regional climate change planning. As we talked about at the last meeting, uh, there are existing activities going around uh, both the region and Marin County. It would make sense, given your uh, mandate, uh, to be an active participant. Uh, that's in this proposed update. Uh, we're also uh, adding a statement with respect to uh, the Commission expending resources at looking at its organizational capacity and in particular looking at its staffing and our consultant options uh, to more uh, aggressively and or efficiently address your study requirements. Uh, fourth, or excuse me, third, um, before I forget, I should actually look at this so I'm not misspeaking. Um, best practices was an issue that uh, several commissioners brought up. Uh, so one of our ideas here is uh, to serve as a resource to the smaller special districts in terms of not only identifying best practices, but perhaps providing some limited staffing resources to help them uh, in their various administrative uh, and financial matters. One of the perhaps projects that may come uh, out of this, and this is a topic for us right now because Candace is dealing with the special district um, election process, uh, most counties have what is referred to as a special district selection committee. Um, I don't know what happened to the one in Marin. Uh, I know that it existed at one point. Um, it would make sense that perhaps your staff could help the special districts uh, reinitiate that process. Uh, a lot of good networking comes out of it. And selfishly for our end, and in particular for Candace, it would get us out of having to run the elections anytime uh, a special district member uh, term is up uh, for office, which is always awkward given that turns out to be one of our bosses. So uh, finally, I see a lot of nodding yeah, of heads from the, our special the, district people. So I think that that is the, the last uh, item. Receptive. And I think it's, it's certainly relevant. Um, uh, I think LAFCO has an opportunity to play a leadership role with respect to working with the county and service providers. And when I, when I mean the county, particularly county environmental health, in streamlining and coordinating responses to getting municipal services to properties in urbanizing areas um, that have septics that have gone bad or uh, wells that are underperforming. Um, certainly I can attest in the year and a half I've been here, if you're a landowner 
and your well or your more particularly your septic goes bad it's not a very easy or straight line process to get streamlined answers on how best to address it i think lafco could play a good role in at least um, creating some known template on for landowners benefits so uh, those are the four new um, policy objectives that you have in this update if you adopt it tonight we are asking it's not ad adopt we are asking that you approve it tonight um, without a formal public review given there is a time sensitivity we rely on this document to inform our work plan the work plan that ultimately prescribes specific projects and we want to bring you a draft of that with a draft budget at your next meeting uh, that said uh, you'll see all of the proposed changes in attachment one in, in um, track form uh, if there's any redirection that the commission would like to see um, by all means so i'll turn this back to the chair so the work program would take this which is the general direction we want to go which is historically guided the development of our work program and put it in a manner that we can basically assign personnel years and in a, some time dimension to various items. Correct. Okay, that's important. Um, first, I would ask the, the commissioner if they have any questions before I ask the public. I'm uncertain here. I think I would feel more comfortable if we are going to have the public speak that it would be a hearing and we open a hearing on it. But this is for us to reaffirm, is this what we did at our strategic planning retreat or not? Mr. Rodoni. Um, I apologize because I missed the strategic planning uh, retreat, but I did want to comment on the special districts item because we had a very busy and, and uh, active special districts association for many, many years. Um, and only recently, probably in the last five, did it uh, uh, disappear. And it was, it was very useful, including uh, working at the state level to get special districts a seat at this table. Mm -hmm. uh, Howard Council and Larry Glazer were two active members that uh, helped do that. Richard um, David Ware, David Ware, and Richard um, Rubin. Rubin was a state uh, Lasco board member at one right. point. So we we were very active as special district, and I think it's a good thing. It does need a little leadership. I I did it for about two or three years, and it was pretty exhausting because. It took a lot of effort, but we used to have monthly meetings and yearly dinners that 80 or 90 people would show up to, and um, it worked very well. We weren't doing self-elections, but we were helping with the election, at least getting the word out and getting the ballots out and that sort of thing. Anyway, I just want to not let it go by without commenting because uh, uh, Larry Glazer actually just passed away mm -hmm. um, a week or two ago. So. Okay. Uh, any other comments, Commissioner? I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Murray. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> okay, just point of clarification on the four new implementing strategies. Uh, sharing best practices with small districts. I think we've discussed many times uh, about <clears throat> looking at policies where we could um, look at the costs of special districts, and those are being reviewed on the municipal sphere review, and where those could be shared, shared costs. Uh, so as part of that, you know, it, there's quite a bit of detail from like Orange County, Yellow County, at the statewide LAFCO meetings, and as those could be filtered down into Marin and applied as we go through these uh, reviews, I think those would be helpful to help with the finances and the budgets of these smaller districts as well as just the um, other items you just mentioned. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other commissioner questions? I'm gonna open a public hearing and any member of the public would like to discuss or comment on the um, strategic, strategic, the strategic plan, um, we'd welcome your comments. Uh, not seeing anyone wishing to comment, at least at this time, uh, I'll move to close the hearing. Entertain, entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Motion and second to close the public hearing. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstaining? The motion is passed. And we have the recommendation to approve the uh, proposed update to our strategic plan and to move for, forward in preparing a work program based on this that we will look at at our next meeting or yes. at our next meeting. That's I'll correct. move to approve that item. Second. Motion to second to approve the um, update to the strategic plan. All commissioners in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Commissioner abstaining? Motion passes and the strategic plan is updated and we pass it on to staff to use as a basis for preparing the uh, work program. Okay, I'll, I'll move to the next item, uh, which is a, also a public hearing. It's a report from the policy committee concerning the first phase of the review and update of the existing policies, procedures, and guidelines uh, that we carry out. Uh, well, certainly, and I, and I can provide uh, a brief overview, and then I'll defer to uh, the chair and the other uh, two policy committee members for their input. But uh, again, so uh, this hearing is for you to consider uh, the first of what will be three phases of a comprehensive update uh, to Marin Lafco's policies, procedures, and guideline document, uh, an update that uh, is going to mark uh, the first time really since 2000, 2001 that this commission has sat down and looked at its policies in any holistic manner um, and of course a lot has changed since that time. Not only do you have now uh, the uh, adoption and implementation of our uh, principal act, the Cortese not Hertzberg uh, Act which went into effect in 2001 but continues to expand and evolve. But then, of course, uh, the commission itself has changed. In fact, I think only uh, the chair and vice chair remain uh, on the commission since the last time you looked at these documents. So uh, it's with that, those changes in mind, right, you know, new statutes and uh, membership change uh, that drives the committee to look at your policies with the idea of, A, are all the relevant statutes uh, in there that need to be in there not only to prescribe um, uh, in direct your own duties, but also for the benefit of the public. And then secondly, um, are we prescribing the way we want to implement LAFCO law in Marin County um, consistent with your preferences? And the key comment there is um, the legislature gives the commission a whole lot of discretion in how you choose to operate uh, Marin LAFCO. Uh, so to keep that in mind. So what the policy committee brings to you this evening, again, is the first of three phases. Uh, this phase is very much kind of an appetizer in the sense that it deals with issues that hopefully we can get through in one meeting before we dive into some more layered issues with respect to your regulatory and planning um, uh, activities. Uh, and there are three chapters uh, that we're bringing forward to you this evening as part of what will be a rechristened policy handbook. Uh, chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, um, an introduction in table setting to the handbook itself, uh, a narrative description and explanation of LAFCO itself, and then most pertinent, I think, to our discussion this evening, uh, the way you choose to operate your business uh, in operations. And I think on attachment 1, you'll see in uh, track change form uh, what we've attempted to do, certainly with the emphasis in creating some narrative-friendly text uh, in some sequential ordering um, and I'd be happy to go into detail on any particular item uh, I'll certainly defer to the agenda report for uh, what hopefully is a good summary of the key issues that we've tackled I, I guess chair I'll, I'll start off by just offering maybe three or four key things that I see in this policy handbook to get on your radar uh, first um, we have uh, touched the per diem issue and I know that in the past this has been a sensitive topic for the commission, uh, but I think a change in the way the per diems are addressed in Marin LAFCO is appropriate, specifically expanding coverage, okay, to allow uh, per diems for uh, members to attend not only committee meetings, but uh, Cal LAFCO events and other uh, training opportunities in which you're doing business on behalf of, uh, of the commission. 
Uh, we didn't touch the actual amounts, although, again, you certainly have discretion to, to talk about that as well. Uh, we also thought it would be high tide to actually define the duties of the chair and vice chair, in particular uh, noting that the chair does serve as the direct supervisor of the executive officer. Uh, we've also uh, decided that it's about time we've est uh, established procurement and counting policies. And so, for example, uh, in this proposed revision, you would be delegating authority to your staff, in particular your executive officer, to be able to make a purchase of up to $3,000 without coming to the commission, as well as cumulative purchases to one particular vendor during the fiscal year of up to 5000 again, without going to the commission. And then the inverse would be true. If any threshold went beyond that, we'd come to the commission for approval. And at that time, you could decide, uh, should we just go ahead with a purchase or pursue a competitive bid? Uh, and then also, we did look at uh, the reserves. And this is kind of a work in progress, as the chair talked a little bit about at our uh, workshop. The one specific change we've made to date um, is to calibrate the reserve threshold, which right now is a flat $150,000. And we've modified that to say it is the policy of Marin Lafco to have reserves in the amount of 150000 or, and this is the new part, or 33% of operating expenses. So it just allows for a little more dynamic uh, connectivity as your budget will naturally grow over the years. What we did not address, of course, is how this commission ultimately is, goes about designating or creating designations within its reserve. Uh, that is something we need to tackle. Uh, part of that discussion again, as we talked about at January 21st, is how this commission wants to deal with its other post-employment benefit obligation. Um, right now, the good news is you have a healthy reserve of over $200,000. Uh, it's unencumbered. You don't have any designations tied to it. But you also have to start thinking about prefunding your medical liabilities going forward with the new accounting pr uh, practices or standards that are coming in play. And then we need to talk about what's an appropriate reserve for uh, legal counsel. Uh, all those things need to be vetted out, but we think that this is a good first start. Um, so I will stop there. If, if the commission wants any more detail, I'd be happy to go there, but I'll, I want to defer to the committee members as well. I think first thing that, that strikes me is this is not easy reading. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I also look at it as something we're working through, as the executive officer said, we divided the, the policies and procedures into three parts. The first one I would sort of call administrative procedures. You know, how do we operate? And one of the things that as we get into our work, what strikes me is we're off, often just creating a new agency. There are no rules on how we operate, uh, except for ones that were adopted uh, back in 2000, 2001, uh, when we were required to do so by the uh, uh, Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act. So it, it's often a, a develop your guidelines as you go situation. And so my thought was is that we could go through this, but we would be a, sort of approving it tentatively so that the other two parts which deal with our regulatory and planning responsibilities when it comes to you we can look at it and put it up on the shelf with this and then the personnel matters that will come as a last package and, and then put them all together to see how this works and we may have to take a particular uh, topic such as the reserves and spend uh, a commission meeting talking about it. What do we want to do with that? Because it's always been kind of a plate on the fly in, in the past. Uh, so anyway, this is our first shot at uh, looking at the administrative procedures. Uh, in a sense, a lot of this red strike through underlying language was moving language around within the document so it had some continuity of flow in it. 
Uh, some of it's new information that uh, are consistent with recent be passed laws, um, and uh, some of it is just uh, some new thoughts that have been put in, and some of it's to engender some discussions, such as the uh, stipend and per diem issue uh, for what we want to do. As the executive officer pointed out, um, that's always been a question. There really aren't any rules for expenses. And what do we mean by per diem? Is it to cover expenses or is it looked on as a stipend, which is essentially a salary? Uh, and so we need to discuss those matters. And uh, I would let the other members of the uh, committee, with, with their observations at this point, uh, Chris Burdick and Jack Baker, speak on this matter and I would Propose just to kind of move through this. So, if there's any questions that anyone has on one page, we go to them. And when we're finished there, we just complete that. And then we move on to the next one to sequentially walk through the document, uh, which isn't as long as I originally thought it was, since it has both a strike through language in it and then a clean copy, which makes, the, uh, makes it look much longer. So, Chris, Jack, any comments you might have? Uh, well, nothing profound. It, oh, okay. Well, if, you, if they aren't profound, then you have to come up and speak into the microphone. Yeah. I'll leave that up to Chris. He's the attorney. But, uh, no, we did uh, meet uh, several times and work on this thing. And uh, as you pointed out, uh, some of it's, a lot of it's moving things around, taking some stuff out for new sections to follow. Uh, I had had met with uh, Keen uh, recently, and but was mostly wordsmithing on things. But uh, I, I think we uh, came, as I recall, to kind of fundamental agreement with a lot of the changes. But there were a few more changes. I think after we met, that uh, in maybe partly in consultation with the chair, that uh, Keen worked out. But I'm I'm happy with it. And, but as you point out, it may be that it isn't easy reading and. Uh, uh, may be subject to, to further uh, review and comments from uh, other commissioners. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Do you have any words? Well, profoundly speaking, um, <laughs> what, we, what we're hoping and trying to do is, um, is make this as reader-friendly to a layperson document as we can possibly get in a very complicated area, which is full of legalese and jargon and special knowledge. And so that's not particularly easy. So what we, we are trying to do is one, the, the stuff you're looking at tonight is to try and explain to a lay person who may have to deal with us, who's never heard of us before, what the structure is, why it is the way it is, and what kind of broad definitions apply, um, who we have jurisdiction over, and who these seven people are. Um, so you get a broad outline of that. And that's the first thing. If I was a lay person and somebody said, you're going to have to deal with these people, I'd want to know, well, who are they and what can they do? Then the second part will be, okay, I've read it. I guess I really do have to deal with these people. I understand it now. Um, how do I file an application? That's the next part. That'll be the, the, the second section. How do I file an application? What if I'm not happy? What if I'm going to be annexed to something I don't want to be annexed to? We'll get to that part in the next part. And then the third part, the last part, is the part we assume that the public is probably the least interested in, which is the internal you know, employment manner in which the, the, the staff and the, and the commission act and interact, which is pretty highly technical itself, but something that I don't think the average citizen is going to be terribly concerned about, and we're going to do that last. So what we did is we looked at some other policy manuals from other places, tried to get an idea of the format and approach they used, uh, how they had structured uh, theirs, what we thought we liked and didn't like. And so <clears throat> that's what we're trying to do. So you'll, you'll see here, for example, a whole bunch of strikeouts on, on um, equal employment opportunity. It doesn't mean we're going to get rid of that stuff. It means it's going to go, hopefully, a little shorter, perhaps, in, in part three, in a more logical progression so that that stuff, when we get to personnel, makes sense. But some of this stuff was, I mean, it was spread all over the place. And yeah, it was, it was pulling things that you said that were just kind of sprinkled through the whole document. So, for example, on the personnel matters, the idea was pull that together so 
we may just have an administrative and per personnel manual that's in the office, but have a document that explains LAFCO, what its authority is, what its responsibilities are, what, what the outside world uh, needs to do, uh, and how to do that in an easily understood, uh, friendly document uh, that can be picked up in our office, picked up off the uh, internet, but can explain LAFCO and the application process and be able to download information. Uh, so that was that was the uh, the thought, and so what we started out with, as it as it indicates, is just general information about LAFCO and its authority and its mandate and its business operations and uh, how it conducts its business and uh, how it evaluates change of organization proposals such as the one we had tonight where we actually stepped in and did something affirmatively rather than react to what was proposed. Um, so that's, that's what you have before you. Um, I am trying to wrestle with the best way of going through this and maybe we can take it chapter by chapter to see if there are comments in chapter one which is our general information and if not put it up on the shelf and proceed to uh, chapter two and likewise until at the end we've got at least something tentatively we agree with there are some matters in here that I believe need discussion, such as the stipend and the per diem. I think that's very important that we have a firm understanding of what kinds of meetings we should, as commissioners, receive a per diem or stipend for, whether it's just commission meetings or any meeting that we go to that would uh, reflect on LAFCO or have matters of, of LAFCO interest in it. So um, I, I'm going to move them through this chapter by chapter until we're finished with what we have this evening, if that's agreeable to the commission. If not, uh, if you have different ideas of how we could do this, I'd like to hear them. Okay. I think going through them, just if anyone has questions, um, is the best way to do it. Okay. Okay. So, so let's do it. okay. So the first chapter is general information, uh, which is the introduction and purpose of LAFCO uh, and what we intend to do by this handbook. And that's just general information on how it's how the handbook's organized and how to get hold of LAFCO and who its members are. So it's just information what this beast is and how it operates. What this beast is, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and if there are any comments on on that those two pages, um, Now's the time to hear them, or we'll just, again, put it on the shelf until we can get all this together and then look at it comprehensively down the line. And then the general authority and mandate, uh, you know, this comes directly from the statute. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's repeating the statute, hopefully in a friendly term, so it's understandable by folks. And that goes on to also include uh, what governmental institutions, local government institutions, uh, are subject to LAFCO's authority? Uh, because that is, we found out, a question that people have. And so that's listed here. And uh, that is the basis of the uh, Chapter 2 but it also includes definitions which we've found to be important for people to understand 
the terminology used by LAFCO and what it m means when certain words or phrases are used. And many of these definitions are directly out of the statute, too. They mm -hmm. were not made up by the uh, committee. Uh, I have a question. That's the one made up by the committee, I'm sure. But, <laughs> yes. Are some of the, um, the conditions that are crossed out, does that mean they're going to be put there in other places in the, in the uh, document? Likely so. It depends on which ones they are. If they are out of date or have been superseded by uh, legislation, they would be crossed out. But I would have to look at. Well, I'm on page 34 and I'm looking at harassment. Harassment? Harassment, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. would go into it. that. Oh, the reason all that's yeah. crossed out is that's what we're moving into a separate personnel. Great. Chapter EMLs. or yeah. booklet. Great. We felt that. No, no, no. I think we will we probably laws about that. <laughs> we will probably ban it uh, in this book. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that's uh, Commissioner Arnold. That, that was our intent, there, not, okay. not to do, do away with it. No, I thought uh, completely. Okay. Um, but the idea is that if this is the document handed out to the public that wants to know how can I get annexed into yeah, this sewer district, don't, they, don't need to they read probably it. don't need to know what our personnel yeah. policies and harassment. That's are. great. But if they do, they Got can it. get a special uh, document. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to move to the third chapter, which is you know, this also explains the, the role of the commissioners, the commission terms, which are laid out in the uh, statute, and uh, our meetings, how they're set up. As I said, this is pretty straightforward administrative stuff. Mm -hmm. The budget, how we do our budget, it follows the procedure we've been following for a number of years but never put down on paper. So we had to rely on institutional memory. Mm -hmm. And for some, that memory is fading. So we have to catch that <laughs> how we can. Uh, Commissioner Murray. On item uh, 3.14, Accounting Internal Controls, item C, Payroll and Benefits Administration. Do you have a page number? Uh, page um, 32. Uh. Yes, okay. Item C. So I'm, I'm just thinking there, and Jeff, you might want to chime in on this too, that there maybe is a specific section just on OPEB, uh, post employment benefits. Uh, it doesn't seem to really define that. It seems like we've struggled with that in the past. So that, that might be good to clarify that. Uh, th that's a good point. Uh, and I think that's something we're in the process of right now seeking to to clarify that we thought we had that clarified but we don't now but that's that's a good point Craig it the first one is the case it's it's the policy that we did adopt that that we determine pay and benefits uh, and but they're they're pegged on comparable positions with the county of Marin and that has been historically what LAFCO has done. And the second one is something we probably need to refine a little bit more, the uh, retiree issues and pension issues. So we can look at that. Chair, if I could just add a comment, we, yeah. we, uh, because it is a relevant item coming up, um, as you know, uh, the public member term is set to expire, and mm -hmm. this has no bearing on that ha uh, happenstance, but one of the things we did talk about that, we, that I did not highlight earlier was 
Uh, we did add some prescription about the criteria to be a public member. So if you go mm -hmm. to page 20 on your document, right now it's kind of open-ended. Anyone uh, can apply for the public member position, whether it's the regular or alternate position. State law precludes them from being a member of a city or special district, um, either an employee or an elected official. We talked about and added uh, uh, our own local criteria that we would want to preclude any member who happens to be, let's say, on an advisory committee, like a general plan update, or something that would perhaps have some indirect relationship with Marin Lafco. So that was um, one area that we, we tweaked. It's sort of the conflict of office yeah. rule. And then when you talked about the budget process, absolutely. Most of uh, the brand new budget process starting on page 28, it's just taking the established process that uh, this commission has followed for many years. Um, we have added one new wrinkle that if this gets approved would go into play next year, and that is to create a new step. So right now the process has been uh, staff brings you a proposed budget with a work plan, you approve it, and then we do a public uh, review, and then we come back at the very next meeting for final adoption. We've uh, added uh, a, 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 a middle step that would allow us to come with a draft proposed budget uh, as early as February before uh, having to go through a formal proposed or final budget, and that is so we have an opportunity to vet big-ticket changes for the commission uh, because, obviously, once we send out a budget, our funding agencies start using the number in their own budget uh, uh, budgeting purposes. So uh, one of the things we talked about is being more telegraphic in terms of, hey, if we're going to increase the budget by a considerable amount, give as much headway to the uh, affected agencies as possible. And that's prior to the commission re approving a work program? Uh, well, it would be in conjunction with looking at a work uh, work plan. It would help inform that work plan. For example, if the commission wanted to add fifty thousand dollars for some more consultant work, we'd be able to have that discussion at February or a new staff member and talk about all the details that go into it. Um, and so we'd get some firm direction from the commission on what is your preference, and then as part of the actual adoption process. We, we wouldn't surprise you, and we wouldn't mm. surprise the agencies by having, let's say, a big jump in our, uh, uh, our number. Okay. So this is sort of an early warning. An early warning. early warning. Uh, like a tsunami alarm. Oh. <laughs> I could think of probably a more positive one if you give me uh, two more minutes. No, I'm, just, I'm just looking at this, yeah. Climate change. <laughs> okay. But that's that's the uh, that's the major change, or the maybe only change in the budget yeah. process. The rest is putting Just down on paper practice. what we've done yeah. historically, and, and unless there's kind of a move to change what we've historically done, which seems to have pretty much stood the test yeah. of time. Um, this is what this is intended to do. And then that moves into the fee schedule on the next page, which is Thursday, uh, 30, uh, which we just went through the process of updating. Mm -hmm. And procurement, uh, our, the, the review we had, the... Um, so the outside auditor said, hey, LAFCO, you need to write down uh, procurement and... Um, purchasing policy. So all of this, starting on page 30, 31, and 32, that is all brand new. Nowhere in our existing policies do we have this. And that's based on the advice of the... Uh, outside auditor. Outside auditor, which I, I think is a good mm -hmm. inclusion in here. Yes. Thanks. So, sorry, the backup, but on page 27... 
and this might be kind of perfunctory, but the Rosenberg Rules of Order. Ah, uh, yes. I just want to discuss that a little bit. It seems more practical that I imagine most of our agencies are all working under Rosenberg Rules. Is everybody familiar with the Rosenberg no, rule of order. Is this like the Marquis of Queensbury rules? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, to me, it would be a simple, simplified and user-friendly form of, of Robert's rules um, that was, that were developed by Judge Rosenberg and have been adopted by many local governments throughout the state. Uh, because they are very straightforward, understandable, and short. Um, but it's probably something we should, if people aren't familiar with it, we should bring here so you actually see it. Actually, Judge Rosenberg did speak at the Calafco and Squaw Valley. There's some notes uh -huh. from that that might be mm. good just for training for commissioners as well, including a future packet. Okay, well, I think this is something we ought to call out and bring to the commission with some understanding of exactly what it is and how it differs from Robert's rule of, orders, of order. I can envision staff providing a nice two-table description of any differences uh, perhaps as early as our next meeting. Okay, because there's, there's literature and information on this, as Craig said, uh, Judge Rosenberg gives a traveling show of it, and so he's got it in print, mm, and it's uh, it's pretty good stuff. Well, going then, continuing on. So that, you know, that is about it, uh, Chair. As you mentioned, the rest of the document starting on page, I think, 33 through the 47, um, it's striked out, but again, for purposes of uh, Putting introduction parts. at a later uh, place. So that was our first phase. Again, I kind of refer to it as an appetizer. It, it deals mostly with internal procedures. Um, there's no real impact on applicants, hence why we didn't uh, at least budget a formal public review but of course if the Commission thought that was appropriate we can do that um, but as early as your next meeting we're hoping the policy committee comes back with uh, phase two um, maybe we can bring up the the one issue of, of stipends and per deems here because I think it it, it touches on everyone here uh, because it has been in the in the print pr uh, press uh, over the years about institutions charging a lot of money for their members to travel to meetings and uh, right now what we give is a hundred dollar stipend basically to uh, commissioners and alternates who sit uh, in place of commissioners and fifty dollars uh, to alternates to attend the meeting and one of the thoughts was for those who choose to go to meetings such as um, what Cal Afco would put on or to the Cal Lafco conference or a conference on population forecasting because it's uh, of interest in West Marin or any other place, uh, that the commissioners get uh, a stipend for attending that. Uh, and so the question is, whether or not that that is something as a matter of policy the commission supports. And if not, we keep it as it is today, which is you're only paid for coming to a commission meeting. And uh, it is, and our existing rules are rather silent on attending other meetings. And it's based on the uh, commissioner's own determination of what is important for that commissioner to carry out his or her responsibilities as a LAFCO member. So right now the proposal is to increase 
the uh, att uh, payment for attendance at various other meetings. But it, I felt it was something that the commission ought to be aware of, and uh, if there's a concern about that, to, to voice that. I'm fine with that. You're fine I think with that's it. fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just, um, Chair, I, I think there needs to be a clarification, though, because um, sometimes when you attend the conference, for example, you're reimbursed for all your costs. So is it a per diem or a stip you know, what is the hundred, what is the additional money then? Right. Um, I think our district basically says if you're reimbursed, you don't get the per diem. Right. And, and so there just needs a clear understanding for that. I think, or or you get both, whatever it is. But I think we need to. Yeah, and I guess where I would raise at least a possible concern is, where it says training sessions, that is a little bit open ended. Yeah. So, but it does tie into Dennis's issue as well. No, I I, I agree. It's it, it's sort of your, you know, the theory behind the original theory behind the, the per diem in, in our in our. In our booklet of uh, the policies and guidelines, the $100 is referred to in some places as per diem and in other places as a stipend. Well, they're different. Uh, and the per diem is meant to pay you for expenses that you may have incurred and instead of in lieu of handing in an expense claim. Uh, and some in those cases say, well, let's just get a a figure, say, of $100 and don't turn in an expense claim, and this should cover, because of historical analysis, this should cover your expenses, but it may not. But I think we need to be clear there because just looking at the language here, I think the, the terms are, are used to mean the same thing, both per diem and, and uh, stipend. Stipend is, is, uh, is sort of, payment of a salary, it's a form of salary that you get paid for doing something. Mm -hmm. Where if you go to a conference, are you going and being paid for going there or are you being reimbursed for your cost of driving your own car and parking and bridge toils? I mean, that, to me, that, that helps. The answer to that helps us craft what we want to put into this mm -hmm. section. My own feeling is is that we should be reimbursed for our personal out-of-pocket costs, but the kinds of conferences or meetings that we go to are generally small ones. Most of them are local, and it's something we can do on our, on our own. I agree with that. I think where you do see a lot of the public issues that have arisen, certainly not necessarily in Marin, um, but <coughs> statewide, you do have the kind of payments for attending discretionary training sessions, that sort of thing. So I would, I would agree with that distinction. Well, should we be paying then someone reimbursing their costs? solely or should it be we're just paying him a stipend to go to a meeting to learn more to become a better I would say reimbursement of okay. costs. Anybody else have any thoughts on that? I know Judy you indicated that you felt the stipend probably was a better way to go. Well is this this is for someone who's going to come besides coming here for our Yes. When I think Judy was talking about the state conference too, oh, well, which arguably good. is a little bit yeah. different, but the, the what? state LAFCO conference. Oh, okay. So if you go to a state LAFCO conference, three three days, and it's held in downtown Madeira or someplace like that. Um, Free parking in Madeira. Try that at Civic Center, San Francisco. <laughs> Forty bucks for a day. Um, are we looking to reimburse the cost to go to this, or are we looking to pay the person for going there, and out of that pay, they can pay their cost? 
Well, I would think that you would ask for reimbursement because oftentimes the stipend doesn't come close to covering the cost. Right. The cost. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Jack, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was Gary, just going to pretty waiting, much I'm, agree with uh, that's part of Carla on that. It, 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 uh, it makes reference under reimbursement to such items as transportation and lodging. Well, right there, we're over 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. So if we're going through the exercise of getting the approval and, and uh, being signed off by the executive director, then presumably it's important enough for this organization to support at least reimbursement so there's not out of pocket right. for right. these items. So I'm in favor of reimbursement. Reimbursement, okay. Well, yeah. maybe a, a minority opinion, but it, uh, if somebody's going to take a half a day or a day of their time to go to Sacramento, it's one thing going maybe to San Rafael, but uh, as I think Craig has done, I went on a training course, uh, you know, with a couple of members of the commission a uh, couple months ago, but if you're going to take half a day or a day of your time to go up there and say, well, your only reimbursement is for the bridge toll and maybe mileage, I, I don't think that's reasonable. I, I think that it, you're, it's only $100. It's not like it's $500 or something. I I just think we're, we're kind of scrimping too much. It, it, it's uh, uh, just so I, I think it should be both. Why, why should it be either or? Okay. And I, I would think that's most entities would do it that way. I don't really know that, but uh, just a different well, opinion. I, I look at it more as the half day is your public service. Well, and, uh, more power to you. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> you're yeah, a good that's person, just but my but personal feeling, but that's what we're trying to bat okay. around here. Dennis, any thoughts? Well, I, I would just say I think we need two policies. We need a, a meeting attendance policy and what you get paid for that, which may be a stip, and then we need a reimbursement policy that all costs will be reimbursed. And and I don't agree with Jack. I think that if we're spending several eight hundred dollars to go to a conference for one of our members, that's a lot of the bu lot of the money out of the budget, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. not so adding on two or three hundred dollars makes a difference. And I think if you're willing to do that, you sort of go with that in mind that you're giving up some some of your time. And getting reimbursed, um, some of them were seven, eight hundred dollars. I saw the disbursements this last round for two or three members. So it's a substantial amount of money at the end of the end of the year. So, um, but I think we need a policy for both. Uh, okay. How you're reimbursed and how you're paid for. So Dennis, any, you're proposing stipend only for the regular meeting. Basically. Yeah. 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 I think that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I'm getting the sense that that is the majority feel. Gary, does that square with what your thinking is? Yes. Okay. Craig, you? Uh, well, there's <clears throat> merits to both. I, I, uh, one would be dissuading members, particularly new members that may want to go to these trainings, but it, it is a choice. You take time off work to go to the training. Uh, and, and, you know, and I, also I agree it is public service. A lot of this, <clears throat> we're here, and we are, in effect, volunteering our time to serve the public. So uh, there's basic reimbursements, and I agree with Dennis, too. We have a pretty tight budget, uh, so um, it, it's understandable that all things probably won't be reimbursed. Okay. Uh, Damon, I think I understand your position, which is my position, which I believe is Dennis's position, which is... Carla's position and Judy's position. So, well, we then there's a, there's an easy fix. So, if 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 it sounds like the majority of the commission wants uh, for uh, meetings that occur outside of this boardroom, essentially, um, that right now we have uh, under Section A of uh, 3.6 where we talk about stipends, and there's this last solid red line that says per diem shall also be provided to members in the following cases. Well, just say, and in lieu of receiving reimbursements. And so it sounds like that would be either or. If you're not, not going to claim a, 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 a reimbursement, okay, then you can claim a per diem. Mm -hmm. It sounds like that might be the flexibility that. But reimbursement and per diem are the same thing. Well, no, a reimbursement, let's say for actual costs, let's say parking ticket, mileage. Okay, but, it, but normally you're given a per diem, which is 
kind of a top line for transportation, lodging, food, and then you turn in your cost, and if you exceed that amount, that's out of your pocket. Mm. If not, then well, it's interesting. you can... <laughs> so my definition was, uh, of a per diem is a little different. It's, it's actually, I, I've used a, 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 a stipend and a per diem very similarly in that they're, they are uh, payment for time. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's not how the IRS looks at it, but okay. <laughs> nor the Department of General Services. But. I have a question. Yes. So what about like committee meetings, like the time that Jack and you and Chris have put into doing this? That's not at a regular meeting, but you should get a per diem for that, shouldn't you, for your committee meetings? I think, for example, if there is a, for me, if there's a meeting in West Marin, which means I put on a little more than 60 miles mm -hmm. on my car, um, that mileage as an expense is reasonable. For me, claiming any other funds, I don't believe For the it committee. Is. Hmm? For, for, for your yeah, committee. Yeah, for the committee meeting. Okay. That's how I would look at what we're talking about. I would add, add another wrinkle to it is I never understood why our strategic planning workshop was never paid. It's a meeting of the commission. It should be a, either a regular or special scheduled meeting of LAFCO yeah. that you get your But there, early on, stipend for. unless there was an uh, agenda included that day, mm. we never did get That's paid. That's interesting. I never quite understood that, so that would need to well, be clarified. I'll tell you, it, sometimes we have gotten it. And sometimes we haven't, and that's why we want to put this down. But just some clarity is all. And it should be a reg like a regular meeting, I think. May I suggest this is something that the committee ought to get its head together and noodle out and yeah. come back? I'm asking Chris. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, no, thoughts. Oh, it's about just per diem slot means by the day. And yeah. I mean, I. I'm an arbitrator, and when somebody asks me what my per diem is, I send them a one-page sheet that says, for mediations, it's X, for fact findings, it's Y, and it, that doesn't, it's not a, my out-of-pocket cost, it's, in essence, my daily fee. And so when I see per diem, to me, that means they're going to give me that to attend here, whether it takes 15 minutes or it takes eight hours. Mm -hmm. And that's, in essence, some effort to reimburse me for the time I spend only here, but like all of you, the time I spend reading the packet, going over the materials, looking at it, which we don't get paid for. Um, and I mean, nobody is here to make any money doing this. We are, we're the world's nine dumbest business persons on the planet. <laughs> no, but that's what, we get money paid, doing that's what we get paid for for coming here. Well, I understand that. that. And, you, know, and um, you say that if you were going to go to West Marin, you'd like to get reimbursed your mileage. Well, Dennis and I come out from West Marin to here, you know, six times a year, and would be kind of cool. He drove today, <laughs> and you know, if he got reimbursed for his mileage, it doesn't work that, that way. For me. And yeah. like the committee meetings, I mean, we spend more time in the, in the policy committee meetings oh, yeah. than we do here. Oh, I know. For sure. That's clear. Yeah. I, but I don't, I don't care. I'm retired, so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, I think we need, uh, the committee needs to come back to you and sort this one out. Uh, you got my understanding of per diem is a daily allowance for expenses. No. Okay. The election of officers, let's see. We basically are through this then. Uh, except for the matters of coming back to you on the uh, stipend and per diem issue. Um, the Rosenberg <laughs> Rules of Order, which we'll come back to, and the uh, retiree health care matters that Craig raised. Is there any action recommended for this? Well, of course there was. Uh, so we were we came to the meeting with the recommendation that you approve with any specific uh, amendments that you'd like to see. Uh, you could certainly do that with 
direction that these specific sections get further vetted out and come back or and that's alternative action one or if you just felt more comfortable continuing this uh, and having it come back along with the other phases uh, that would be carried under alternative action two well why don't we just pull out what we are going to work over and have agreement on the other material which there doesn't is Gary I just have one item on uh, I think it's the very last page of the uh, draft document page 30 under fraud prevention it says Rin Lafco shall establish a policy on fraud prevention at a later date and I guess I'm not quite comfortable with that conclusion okay. I mean it does seem to me that we should have fraud prevention in place as a body and at a later date seems rather arbitrary to me. It's a bit of a lease and <laughs> don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> and you'll probably be called me after uh, <laughs> Okay. Slight of you. So I I would prefer to have a specific date in there if, if this board is going to approve this. And then I would presume that once that is established, you've got the fraud prevention section inserted. Uh, but uh, it seems like uh, as as uh, uh, Damon mentioned a little little loose to me and that's on page 30 well I, I sort of leaped ahead to the final document and it's on the draft document page there is very last page under F, uh, so, this F. Is the, is this the so on the track document? change version Commissioner Phillips is looking at page 32 oh, okay. where you have uh, D fund uh, balance designations E capital asset and then F fraud prevention oh, okay right. there it is all three have that same template language about we'll deal with these at a later date you can certainly be time specific and that would be part of the committee's task along with vetting out the the per diem slash reimbursement issue and come back to you soon isn't there a commercial about that fog fog protection <laughs> um, <laughs> that too fog protection <laughs> so I'm I I would make a motion that we approve um, section this this section with the caveat that the committee will come back to us on per diem and on fraud and okay. thank the subcommittee for their work second okay. okay can we add the come back to you also with the Rosenberg oh yes add the Rosenberg yeah okay thank you also OPED and the OPED okay so we got those Okay, so, so we have a motion in second to approve the proposed changes to the policy policies and guidelines. Oh, that's right. Um, but before we make that motion, uh, I'm going to ask the public if they wish to comment to the commission on anything we've discussed this evening that deals with our policy handbook no I see uh, shaking of heads in the audience so um, we'll approve the proposed changes to the policy handbook except for the four items that we will come back to to the Commission after the uh, policy committee gets a chance to digest them basically okay. okay all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye 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 any commissioner opposed any commissioner abstaining motion passes okay uh, I'll move to item number 10 which is consideration of a time extension request by the uh, West Marin agencies concerning the uh, uh, countywide water municipal service review thank you chair so the Commission will recall uh, staff presented the first of two sets of agency profiles uh, as part of our scheduled municipal service review on countywide water service back on January 8th and then immediately um, circulated those profiles uh, out for a 45 day public review period as provided under our approved scope of uh, work and those profiles were in draft form and covered the four 
uh, special districts that fall under your jurisdiction that operate exclusively in West Marin. You have Inverness, uh, Bolinas, Stinson Beach, and, and Muir Beach. Um, and right now we are a little bit uh, past the halfway point of that 45-day review period. Well, before the commission this evening is a request from two of those agencies, agencies, Bolinas and Inverness, looking for an additional, additional uh, 60 days to comment on the draft pro profiles that, again, we brought to you on the 8th. And if you were to approve said request, that means the comment period just on these four profiles would go from February 26th to uh, April 27th. And now the premise, and I'll, and I'll note both comments or requests are uh, provided as attachments to your staff report or agenda report, is premised on the idea that the agencies, and specifically Inverness and Bolinas, want to do a little bit of their own work uh, on the water study. In particular, uh, they took issue with some of staff's projections with respect to uh, water supplies during uh, severe drought conditions. And so they're looking to do some work on this end, presumably uh, to either counter and or contextualize uh, what was before you. Um, now, as for an update, and this is not in your staff report, I did meet with all four agencies uh, this afternoon in Bolinas as part of a scheduled get-together, and we talked about their request. I noted that 60 days would put a bit of a burden on LAFCO, and in particular LAFCO staff, in meeting our, our schedule, and I asked, would you be okay with 30 days with the understanding that you would still get another bite at the apple when we produce a final report, i.e. there would be another comment uh, review uh, process in. And they all shook their head and said, that seems reasonable, although don't be surprised, LAFCO, if on day 29 we come to you and say we need more time. And I said, well, the commission can take that up at that point. So my recommendation, which is not in the report, is for you to authorize a 30-day extension not the six day, but a 30 day extension, which would take this through uh, essentially the end of March. Uh, I will note, because I know a couple of uh, commissioners asked about this, we're still proceeding on the rest of the study. Uh, we're working on North Marin right now and Mar Marin Municipal, and our goal is to get draft profiles on those agencies for you in April. So work continues. Uh, this is a request to give those West Marin agencies a little more time uh, to comment to this commission. So our recommendation is 30 days. Um, can you, I, I, I know, correct me if I'm wrong, that the original draft staff report went out about the 1st of sub December. Correct. And then we canceled the December meeting because of the storm. And to the end of, well, to the end of this 45-day period, which we agreed to at our last meeting, it's roughly 80 days that it's been out, which is eh, just under three months. Uh, so that there has been time for them to look at. If we were to extend this an additional 30 days, I understand you to say that this really isn't going to affect our schedule all that much. You will continue with the work that you are doing now. Yeah. And you would be able to do that while the West Marin agencies are doing the work that they feel is important. Correct. I mean, it would impact us. And, and I realize I, I inverted the pages. So if you go to the very last page, which is actually page three in the staff report, we created a little table that tells you what would be the difference in end product between <laughs> staying the course, bless you, between just staying with a 45-day period versus these two alternatives, one being a 30-day extension and the other being the 60-day extension. Um, a 30-day extension does push you back essentially another commission meeting in terms of wrapping this up, but importantly, it stays us or keeps us away from perhaps bleeding into the new calendar year because what you want to avoid is having uh, then an argument appear saying, well, now you're a full year behind, your data is that much more stale. So what we really want to avoid is presenting you a final report in, at the end of this year. We want to at least get it to you in October. So that's the difference to staff in why we're recommending going with 30 days and not 60. Um, okay. 
and it's a chance to be a good partner with a special districts that historically have not had much experience with LAFCO, mm -hmm. which I was told repeatedly uh, today about. And they, they need a new policy book. <laughs> um, any commissioners have any questions <laughs> of the executive officer on this matter? Yes. Chris, can you come and talk in the microphone so we can pick you up? Sorry, Mr. Chair. Do we have a general idea what what they need the time Into for? Into the microphone. What what they need the time for? Well, I, mean, I know what, that. What are the concerns that? I, I believe that at least Inverness, and I'll defer to uh, Commissioner Rodani because he's also been uh, engaged in this, are looking at actually bringing in consultants, their own consultants, to uh, vet our work and then do some additional work. Which is a good thing, right? Uh, having them uh, look into these core issues. Um, respectfully, I don't know if they would even be able to get that done in 60 days. Yeah. But at least it perhaps gives them an idea of an outline of what they're looking at um, if they go down this path. LAFCO does ultimately need to move forward. I don't think we'll lose too much if we give them 30 days to, to have a better understanding of what they're looking at and provide you hopefully substantive comments to help address where your staff and their staff may diverge and where we can come back together. Jeff. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Murray. So one of the things we discussed before <clears throat> is despite whatever the final form is of the report, each of the participating agencies could still submit letters and clarifications to, to amend the report in, in their view. So I think there'll be Besides the 30 days and the additional 30 days, there will still be opportunity to even provide at a later date even additional comments and information. Absolutely. As particularly <coughs> Inverness is pretty detailed in their response saying developable parcel inventory, population projections, drinking water demand projections, peak day demand estimates, and retiree pension liability. So it looks like they have quite a bit of work ahead of them. Yes, okay. they do. Okay, um, I have a question. Okay, um, I'm going to open a public hearing here because it's noticed it's a public hearing on our agenda. But question, Commissioner. So, Brown. so if they come back at the at the in 30 days and say we need more, can we ref can we say no and continue doing our work, or do we oh, have? Absolutely. To? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, any uh, further questions uh, of, I'm sorry, thank you. Any further questions of Keene before I open the public hearing? Uh, I'm going to open the public hearing for public comments on the uh, time extension request. I would just uh, urge you to uh, go with the recommendation for 30 days because I think time is of the essence in a uh, complex long-term study of this nature. And if we come back in 29 days, I agree, no, no more, come in later. So that's, uh, I'm Scott McCown, I'm with the League of Women Voters, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Uh, any commissioners have any questions of Scott? Thank you, Scott. Anybody else wish to address the commission on this matter? I'll make, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So move. Second. Motion and second to close the public hearing. All those in favor signify it by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstain? The motion passes. Um, well, we have the staff's recommendation to um, extend the time for comment 30 days from so it would just be a tack on to the original 40 45, days 45 days 45 excuse me days. okay so to add the uh, add 30 days to the original 45 day extension correct uh, does any commissioner wish <coughs> wish to make a motion in that regard so second Motion and second to approve the addition of 30 days for public comment on the uh, draft water study report. 
All those commissioners in favor signify, signify by saying aye. 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 Any commissioner opposed? Any commissioner abstaining? The motion passes and we will extend the public comment period for 30 days. Thank you. Ah, the approval of the official agency logo. We are so close. So at the oh, last you at the last the meeting, last? you approved a design uh, with some direction to staff to come back with some color schemes, um, and including a black and white version. So in your report, you have a consistent uh, design logo that has a couple of different variations in colors. Um, I will note, because it did seem to be popular at the January 21st workshop, that Commissioner um, Condon's uh, version, if you go to the second attachment, is the third page. These were the versions that Carla masterfully came up with, and I think the commission that who were present nodded their head in, in, in some agreement. So if there was one in particular uh, that the commission is ready to move on, we're, we're at the goal line. We just need uh, this one last step. So um, I'd ask for the commission uh, to perhaps make a nomination and see where we go with this. So this is, we're, we're like a, yes. Okay. Oh, oh, we're in that one? Okay. Yeah. I get mixed up in these. So there's, there's basically two of the same attachments. The, la the latter one just has handwritten identification, 1A, 2A, 3A, and so on. Well, so you want our, I, I'm going to start with Judy and walk down. Okay, well, so then are, are we on, pay, are, are we on 1A, 2A, or 3A pages? Any of them? Any of, any of the three. Oh, okay. Any of the three, there's. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. you may. Um, it's kind of hard, you know, when you print out something to see what, it would be if it was really officially printed. Mm -hmm. And so is there any way to tell how close these colors are to what's really going to, to be? Yeah, no, th these were replicated with printing in mind. So this is essentially what you're looking at will be reproduced. The only difference that will be established on signage is uh, there will be um, contours in the mountains. Right now there's just, uh, for cost saving purposes, just contours on the initial uh, mountain um, that's closest to the bay. Right. There will right. be more detail shown uh, uh, on actual reproduction. Okay, so the colors, I mean, there was the proper amount of ink in the cartridges oh. that printed it out. <laughs> okay, thank you. So the chair had to step away for a minute, and I think he was going to make a round of the commission yeah. and see if you had a preference. So um, starting with Judy. I like 3D, as in David. Carla? Me too. It's between 3B and 3D. Um, Yeah, I would say three. Let's see. Um, I'd say three D. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Phillips. Oh, um, I go with Judy's recommendation, three D. Okay. Thank you. Craig. Um, just for reproducibility, I I like the two color scheme and keep it simple and not. T too much hitting you. So to me, 2E looks to be muted, but still carries all the theme thematic items that we like. Commissioner Conway. 3D. Thank you. Before the chair gets back, I'll just say that I didn't take part in the 21st meeting, so this is a good time to say I'm just here for the candy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's, which one? Three? 3D. I don't think I ever got for it. R2E. Craig. Oh. Craig. Oh, 
That's fine. My only problem with that is the bridge looks like a power line going across. But uh, that's fine with me. Okay. So it sounds like that's successful. I think we have a 3D choice. Outstanding. <laughs> and this was on the work plan, so another thing to uh, strike out. So good. <laughs> Thank you, Commission, for your indulgence on uh, this. And how will these be used? A any way you can think of? Or are they going to be on letterheads? Yeah, we'll be on a letterhead. And, for example, um, we just did that policy committee uh, re uh, report, so we had a, a draft version of it. So anytime you have agency signage, this will be uh, the official branding and imputing of LAFCO uh, ideals going forward. Okay. And just for the benefit of a, a, a um, I, I guess we don't need a, a formal uh, uh, motion. I think uh, just uh, Ned, uh, 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 head nods were sufficient. So thank you. Okay. Uh, committee assignments. Uh, just one recommendation. Uh, you have uh, four committees uh, to uh, make appointments to, uh, Chair. Uh, we would suggest that the Commission consider um, the value of keeping the policy committee intact just given we're halfway through our work. But that's our only suggestion. The rest is uh, everything for the Commission to take up. Okay. On, on the Budget Committee, we've historically had a representative from the Board of Supervisors, from the City Council, and from the Special Districts. And it looks like that's the way it's lined up right now, unless there are some members who would like to step off of that. So the alternate would be Conley instead of Sears, correct, on the Budget Committee? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the Legislative Committee would be Conley instead of Adams, right? Yeah. I'm okay with that. Are you all, yeah, I'm, nobody asked you, did they? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. And the policy stays the same, and the technical committee. I'd be the alternate. Do you want to be the alternate for that? I mean, you were already on. Unless your, someone else does. Guess what? <laughs> You're the alternate. <laughs> um, let's see. Just go with it. Craig, where are you? Oh, you're already on the technical committee. Actually, Dennis may need another assignment but well, I'm, I'm on a short leash here so I was going to ask suggest if uh, Commissioner Murray wanted to get on the budget committee um, or uh, Jack Baker because it won't be in my term uh. that we do that I believe well unless we want to fill that when your term when yeah, you yeah that's fine too because you're going to be involved in the budget I don't think so is it we already done the budget, right? You done? You doing another cycle before May? Uh, yeah, the uh, the fifteen sixteen. Right Exciting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your wisdom, your wisdom is appreciated. I'll do it again. I think it's been around okay. here since I've been here. So, so uh, this looks set to me. Is it agreeable? Yes. Gary, are you on anything here? Very, uh, I see <laughs> only one thing. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and Chair, for uh, staff's benefit, we're taking notes. If you could just confirm whatever changes. Uh, um, okay, yeah. right now? You. Yeah. Here's what I got. Here's what I have for the Budget Committee. Arnold Condon, uh, Rodoni, and Conley as alternate. <coughs> for the Legislative Committee, Conley, Burdick, Phillips. Oh. <laughs> Now you're on. I'm on, but I'm not speaking into it. How's this? Um, for the legislative committee, it's Conley, Burdick, Phillips, and Blanchfield's alternate. 
The policy committee is Baker, Blanchfield, Burdick, with Arnold as alternate. And the technical public information committee is Blanchfield, Condon, Murray, and Conley as alternate. Okay, uh, I take it as a consensus of the commission that that's okay. Uh, commit uh, the executive office. Just report, uh, a couple things. Uh, one was uh, today was the final uh, nomination period for the two opening uh, seats for the special districts or two special district seats on Lafco. Uh, Candace got six nominations, so over the next. Seven, excuse me. So there are a lot of interest uh, in the seats. So uh, there'll be, a, I think, a 60-day uh, ballot process, and probably, uh, I guess, at our June meeting, um, the new terms will begin. Uh, also, we just sent out, and I know Candace sent an email out to everyone, uh, the uh, public member position recruitment has begun, and you will do interviews uh, in April. And that is it. Okay, uh, any commissioner announcements or requests? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion to second. adjourn and a second, and we're adjourned. Thank you.